Hey everyone! I just got back from a conference of university students in Mexico. They invited me there to give this speech and they enjoyed it. I was hoping to upload it in its original form, but unfortunately I couldn't get a copy of this speech. So I've modified it, I've changed it uh, for this channel. I'm making it into several shorter videos, which I'll upload on consecutive Sundays. This is part one. This series of videos is mostly about how I've learned to question things. In the first, I'll be speaking generally about social institutions and how to question them, and in the next ones I'll be talking about different parts of my life and how my experiences have made me think differently. First, we're talking about social institutions. Well, what do I mean by social institutions? You could Google the term if you like, but if you don't want to pause this video, here are some examples. Things like government, the police, the military, democracy, human rights, the rule of law, authority, judges and courts, prisons, the media, like the news, corporations, bosses, banks, schools and universities, money, property, charity, religion, of course, countries, culture and all aspects of culture like tradition and customs, art, ideology, race and racism, gender and gender roles, family, marriage, relationships, community, that should help give you a good idea. You might be able to think of others, too. I talk about some of these institutions in other videos on this channel, so if you're new here, feel free to check out uh, some of the other videos that I offer. In this first video on this subject, I'll talk about some basic tools you can use to question the world around you. Before I do, though, I should probably point out not all questioning is a good use of your time. For instance, it's fine to question relationships and question your feelings about your, your romantic partner and question their feelings about you. But what if you've questioned and you really think there really is nothing wrong? Then just be happy together. You can spend your energy questioning other things. In my original speech, I told everyone to start saying the magic word. The magic word is why. As kids in the, at least in the English-speaking world, I don't know what it was like for you, um, we're taught that the magic word is please. So as kids, we might say something like, I want that, and our mothers, or whoever, would say, what's the magic word? And we'd say, please. <laughs> but I don't think that's really the magic word once you become an adult. Why is much more powerful. Parents often don't like kids asking why, and I can understand that for a couple of reasons, at least one of which is that kids can be very annoying. Why? 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 Are you even listening to me? But also because parents like to keep up an image of authority and too many whys, too many of the magic word, undermines or uh, weakens their authority. But I'm not your dad, so please ask me why as much as you like. With each of these 
institutions that I listed, we can ask why it exists, why we should believe in it, why we should think it's good. Maybe it's not. Maybe it needs to be changed or even eliminated, got rid of. We can always ask why, and we don't have to be satisfied with one answer. For example, if you're a kid and you ask your parents why you have to go to school, they'll tell you it's so you can learn. But I'm a teacher, okay, and I bet you almost any kid could learn more sitting in a library, reading books, or watching interesting videos on YouTube than listening to me talk to a room full of them. But your parents went to school, so they don't question it. And they don't want you questioning it either. That's not the only question worth asking, though. There are other questions you could ask. Try, how do you know? Who says so? Why should I? Why does this person want me to think that way? What are they not saying? What are they not telling me? And who else is there who could give me some perspective on this issue, a different point of view? You probably already ask these questions in some situations. If your older brother tells you you should do something, you'll probably say, why? <laughs> I'm saying you can use them every day to question authorities and experts and anyone else who wants you to believe them. Like me. These questions are a kind of psychological or mental self-defense. The first way that I learned to question any social institutions is by following my curiosity. Nowadays, all my curiosity is directed at, or is focused on, social institutions. Like, for example, uh, capitalism, or the state government, or the school. Curiosity I think is key to learning to question things and probably is learning a uh, key to learning anything. In a world with internet, we can read and listen to anyone we want. So like listen to me, but practice asking the right questions and don't assume anything I say is true. That's what it means to question things asking the right questions, not necessarily to find the truth exactly, but to move closer to the truth. We don't have to know everything for sure. It's fine to doubt things. In my opinion, questioning the dominant institutions of our time is one of the most important things we can do. If we don't question things before we act, our actions could be based on a lie. Our whole lives could be a lie. Think of the police or, or soldiers who terrorize people because they think they're doing it for their country. Hey, if you've been told your whole life that being a soldier is an act of love, you'll believe it. The people in power need soldiers, so they tell us everywhere we go, at every turn, in school, in the news, and so on, that soldiers defend their country and, and that that's a good thing. So a million young Americans watched 9-11 happen. You remember 9-11 18 years ago with the planes flying into the building? It killed something like 3,000 people. But then they signed up to go kill people in Iraq. 
in Iraq? That that's some really bad logic. Some some serious lack of questioning, lack of critical thinking there. Iraq had nothing to do with 9/11. And of course, now a lot of the soldiers who went to Iraq, now they understand all the lies that they were told to trick them into going in the first place, but it's too late now. Something like a million people died in the invasion of Iraq, and it's still causing the survivors all kinds of problems. When we don't question these things, we become servants to the people in power. And yet, when we learn to question things, we can protect ourselves and others from being manipulated or used by other people. And also, questioning things is simply how progress is made. Only by questioning these dominant narratives, the, the way they tell us things are or they're supposed to be, can we discover something new and better. Sometimes when we talk about these things, uh, we use the word paradigm. I mean, literally, a paradigm just means a pattern or an example, but we often use it to mean the way things are right now. It might mean the way we think, um, we being a culture or maybe the people in a field of study, about the right way to do things, or just, again, the way things are. When we recognize something as a paradigm rather than some kind of natural fact, we can question it. You can ask things like, why do we work this way? Why not some other way? You can ask how things were before and why things are this way now. That way you get into the history of something and learning the history of something I think is essential to understanding it. That's as far as we're going today, so let's review the vocabulary. Along with these very important questions, which you, you probably knew before, at least knew the English for, uh, we learned where something is directed at. I said all my curiosity is directed at social institutions. Maybe you could also say my words are directed at you or directed at um, advanced ESL students. I used the word dominant, the dominant social institutions of our time. What are the dominant institutions in your life where you live? I used the word terrorize to describe what uh, many police and soldiers do. They, if you know the word terror or terrorism, you'll already know this word, to terrorize, to not just scare and hurt. That's, that's the very basic level. It's, it's probably much more than that, to really scare with bombs, for example. To manipulate comes from the word for just to use, like maybe a tool, but we usually use the word now to mean um, to use a person to do what you want. So usually manipulation or being manipulated involves some kind of lies. I use the word narrative. Narrative is related to uh, the word, like the word story. It kind of means a story, but again we use it in this context a lot to mean the story that that they tell us, that maybe the people in power tell us about how the world works. It, but it doesn't have to be that. It could be the story about what any group says. This is the way we see the world. Um, it's not necessarily wrong. And same with the word paradigm. A paradigm could just be a dominant narrative, the way things are done now, but 
at its most basic level, it just means kind of a pattern or a typical example of something. So in today's lesson, I explained social institutions and gave examples of questions you can ask about them. I suggested learning the history of something to really understand it and not being satisfied with just one answer. Next week, I'll use some examples from my life to talk about culture and how to question that. See you then.